Hi everyone and welcome back to the Retro Shack and you'll no doubt have noticed especially over the last few months that you can't spend more than five minutes on the internet be it on YouTube, Facebook, news sites, whatever without running into something about chat GPT and AI or artificial intelligence. Yes, it seems that all those science fiction stories warning us about super intelligent computers coming to take over the world are all about to come true. But whilst ChatGPT is an incredible piece of software engineering, it's not the first piece of software to bring warnings of Deus Ex Machina or God from the Machine. Long before ChatGPT was a glimpse in a programmer's eye, there was Eliza, which back in the 1960s may have itself had you worrying about an impending robotic takeover. Lie down on our virtual couch and make yourself comfortable. Here at The Shack, we'd like to give a huge thank you to the sponsor for this video, PCB Way. They help us out with all of our PCB fabrication needs and make fantastic boards at amazingly competitive prices. And it's not only PCBs that are on the menu. Apart from other fabrication services like CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection moulding, PCB Way also have a great projects library of cool stuff to build from people all around the world. Oh, and if you don't like waving a soldering iron about, they can even assemble your PCBs for you. That's the PCB way. Right, on with the show. So let's take a little journey back in time, starting with where we are now, ChatGPT, which is an advanced language processing model developed by OpenAI. It's a cutting edge computer program that can have realistic and engaging conversations. Think of it as a super smart tool that has been trained on tons of data to understand and generate human-like responses. It uses a special type of technology called transformer models, which are really good at understanding and processing language. ChatGPT is like having a knowledgeable and at times witty companion at your fingertips, always ready to chat with you about a wide range of topics. And what it does is pretty impressive, although it's not without its quirks and occasional unexpected responses. But it's not really artificial intelligence. It has access to a vast amount of information and through very clever algorithms can reform and replay that information to you in a manner and style that you've asked for. But it's not really creating anything yet. It can seemingly offer new ideas and thoughts I asked it to write a simple sonnet, and it replied with, <clears throat> In twilight's gentle embrace, dreams unfold. As shadows dance and weave their mystic tale, a whispering breeze, a love story untold. The moon's soft glow, a lullaby's exhale. In nature's canvas, beauty paints its hues, each petal blooming with exquisite grace. The sun's warm kiss, the morning's vibrant muse, a symphony of life in every space. But time relentless marches ever on, the seasons change as days and years go by, yet in this fleeting world love's light has shone, an eternal flame that will never die. So let us cherish moments big and small, for love's sweet essence binds and captures all which although quite generic and not exactly Shakespeare, is better than anything I could have come up with, but it's not really new. It's a construct of all the other sonnets and rules about sonnets to put forward another sonnet that adheres to those constructs and rules. So can it create new rules and constructs? Well, yes. Here I've asked it to create a new form of poetry that's never been seen before, and its response is pretty convincing. But even this is based on things that already exist. True creative spark is still missing. I may be wrong, but I think it will be a while before ChatGPT has a true eureka moment. And that point, my retro friends, is the point I'll think about building that bunker. So how did we get to ChatGPT? Well, 
I'm sure we're all aware of chatbots. Modern chatbots are everywhere these days, found on websites and messaging platforms. They're designed to help you with specific tasks or provide customer support. These chatbots use fancy algorithms and machine learning techniques to understand and respond to your messages. While they may not have the same level of understanding as humans, they can still provide quick and efficient assistance, albeit normally on a very tight band of knowledge. About a decade ago, Siri, Google Assistant and Alexa were the next big AI thing. These are the helpful voices that live in our smartphones, smart speakers and other devices. They can do all sorts of things from answering questions and setting reminders to playing music and controlling smart home devices. They use a combination of voice recognition, language understanding and clever cloud-based processing to carry out their tasks. Sometimes they even have a witty sense of humour and can engage in fun conversations. Most of the time though, they're just annoying. But before all of these fancy machine learning chatbots, there were rule-based or scripted chatbots. These were a type of chatbot that operate based on predefined rules and patterns. These programs follow a set of specific instructions and responses programmed by human developers. Unlike more advanced AI-powered chatbots, a rule-based system doesn't have the ability to understand natural language or learn from interactions. The operation of a rule-based chatbot is straightforward. The bot analyzes user input and matches it against a predefined set of rules or patterns. If a user's input matches a specific rule or pattern, the chatbot generates a predetermined response associated with that rule. These rules are typically based on keyword matching or regular expressions. Now, one advantage of rules-based chatbots is their simplicity. They're relatively easy to build and maintain as the rules can be defined explicitly. They can be effective in handling specific tasks or providing predefined information in a structured manner. For example, a rules-based chatbot on a company's website might assist users by answering frequently asked questions or providing product information, but I wouldn't expect a chatbot on the McDonald's website to be answering questions about a Ford Ranger, for example. However, rules-based chatbots have other limitations too. They lack the ability to understand context or engage in open-ended conversations. Since their responses are predetermined, they may not handle unexpected user input very well and can provide generic or even unhelpful responses when faced with unfamiliar queries. From advanced AI models to humble beginnings, these chatbots have amused, assisted and occasionally confused us along the way. It's a testament to our fascination with creating digital companions that can engage us in conversation and bring a touch of humour to our interactions. So now with the history out of the way, let's take a little look at Eliza. Are we feeling comfortable? In the realms of chatbot development, the name Eliza shines as a beacon of innovation. Created by Joseph Weizenbaum in the 1960s, Eliza emerged as one of the earliest examples of a rules-based chatbot. Simulating a Rogerian psychotherapist, Eliza employed a clever set of rules and pattern matching techniques to generate responses. Weizenbaum, a computer scientist and professor at MIT, developed Eliza as an experiment in natural language processing. Weizenbaum named the program Eliza after Eliza Doolittle, a character from George Bernard Shaw's play Pygmalion, where Eliza undergoes a transformation in her way of speaking and thus changes the way that people interact with her. Eliza gained significant attention and became a notable milestone in the field of artificial intelligence and human-computer interaction. It sparked interest and debate about the capabilities and limitations of machine conversation. Despite its relatively simple rules-based approach, 
Eliza demonstrated the power of language processing and the potential for creating engaging interactions between humans and computers. Eliza's approach to conversation was truly unique for its time. It eschewed traditional methods of data processing and instead focused on reflecting the user's statements and asking probing questions. By mirroring the user's words and expressing empathy, Eliza created an illusion of understanding and fostered a sense of connection. This simple yet effective technique allowed users to delve into their thoughts and emotions, unburdening themselves in a safe and non-judgmental space. And as any sitcom aficionado will tell you, this will eventually lead to questions about how you feel about your parents. Eliza possessed several strengths that captivated users and laid the foundation for future chatbot development. Eliza provided users with an outlet for emotional expression. Through its reflective approach, it encouraged individuals to articulate their concerns and fears, alleviating their emotional burden. Users often reported feeling heard and understood, even though Eliza's responses were rooted in simple rule-based patterns. It's worth noting that Weizenbaum himself was surprised by the level of emotional attachment and engagement users developed with Eliza. He realized that even though the program had no real understanding, users found value in having a non-judgmental space to express their thoughts and feelings. One of Eliza's notable strengths was its simplicity. The rules-based programming made it relatively easy to implement and use, requiring minimal technical expertise. This accessibility allowed individuals from various backgrounds to engage in therapeutic conversations without the need for specialized knowledge. And while Eliza made significant strides in human-computer interaction, it also had notable weaknesses. Eliza's responses were primarily based on pattern matching and lacked genuine comprehension. It couldn't truly grasp the complexities of human emotions or provide profound insights beyond its scripted patterns. The illusion of understanding, though impressive, did not translate into actual understanding. Eliza's responses were confined within the predefined rules it followed. As a result, it struggled to handle unexpected or non-standard inputs. In such cases, Eliza often resorted to generic prompts or simply repeated the user's words, revealing its limited adaptability in engaging with novel or unconventional queries. While Eliza excelled in reflective conversation, it fell short when it came to offering practical solutions or actionable advice. Its focus primarily lay in mirroring and exploring the user's thoughts rather than providing concrete guidance. As a result, users might have found solace in conversation but were left wanting in terms of practical support. Eliza's introduction to the world of chatbots heralded a new era of human-computer interaction. By leveraging rules and pattern matching, it sparked conversations that resonated with users on an emotional level. However, Eliza's limitations, including the lack of true understanding, limited adaptability and inability to provide practical solutions, shed light on the challenges faced by rules-based chatbots. Nonetheless, Eliza's influence on the development of conversational agents remains significant, as it paved the way for the sophisticated modern behemoths of language models and, of course, unfortunately, the inevitable overthrowing of the human race when Skynet finally becomes active. If you want to take a look at how the modern world of AI human-to-computer interaction came about, there are online versions to have a play with. Check out the links to Eliza's in the video description. I hope you've enjoyed this little look back at the dawn of the downfall of human civilization or the new dawn of enlightenment, depending on your own particular views. If you've had any funny experiences with chatbots, paste them in the comments, family friendly of course, and we can all have a giggle. Thanks for watching, and until next time in the shack, it's goodbye from me.